This man I'd barely seen on TV was my last hope. I didn't know what connection there could be between the Mayans and what had happened to me, but at that point, I was ready to accept any explanation that could make sense out of the nightmare that my life had become. Hello, uh, I'm a journalist, and I have an appointment with Professor Kiryakin. The professor's waiting for you. Professor Kiryakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes, I've been waiting for you, young man. Uh, what, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? Uh, in fact, I'm a freelance journalist. I write articles and sell them to whoever wants to publish them. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Uh, have we met somewhere before? Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. Could you explain this other world? Oh, the world beyond our own. The kingdom of the gods and the dead. The Mayans believed that human sacrifices allowed them to hear the voices of the deceased and see into the future. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. This painting, uh, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. <laughs> the priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. The Oracle is not the one stabbing the victim? Oh, the Oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the Executor. The Oracle takes complete control of the Executor, manipulating him from a distance. What happened to the Executor after the sacrifice? He went mad and committed suicide after accomplishing his part of the ritual. A Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? My name is John Cunningham, and I am indeed a journalist, as I've already told you. I think I've taken enough of your time, Professor. Thank you for the information. As you wish. It's a shame, though, that you won't tell me more. 
now. If I were you, I'd leave here by the employee's exit. The security guard's been reading an article showing your photo, and I'm afraid that he may soon uh, recognize you. Thank you for your help, Professor. Don't move! Put your hands in the air! Turn around! Slowly! And that's how my story ends. Accused of a murder that I didn't commit. It didn't take long for the police to connect me with the murder. Professor Kiryakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes. I've been waiting for you, young man. Uh, what, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? I write for National Geographic. <laughs> It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Uh, have we met somewhere before? You told me you didn't have much time for our interview, so maybe it'd be best if we began, don't you think? Curious. He avoided answering my question. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. What would you need to do to get the serpent to open its two mouths? A human sacrifice, of course. The liberated soul then opens the passage, and thus the oracle can use this serpent channel to see into the other world. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. This painting, uh, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. <laughs> the priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. How did the ritual sacrifice work? Oh, the oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the executor. The oracle takes complete control of the executor, manipulating him from a distance. Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? 
I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I'd never seen before, three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. I understand. Uh, excuse me for just a second. Put your hands in the air. Turn around, slowly. And that's how my story ends. My reporter masquerade didn't convince Kuriakin, and he had me arrested. I'd never know exactly what happened to me that cold night in January, because as far as everyone else is concerned, I'm a cold-blooded murderer. <laughs>